Early History of London The history of London, the capital city of England and the United Kingdom, extends over 2,000 years. In that time, it has become one of the world's most significant financial and cultural capital cities. It has withstood plague, devastating fire, civil war, aerial bombardment, terrorist attacks, and riots. The City of London is the historic core of the Greater London Metropolis. And is today its primary financial district, it represents only a small part of the wider metropolis. Foundations and Prehistory some recent discoveries indicate probable very early settlements near the Thames in the London area. In 1993, the remains of a Bronze Age bridge were found on the Thames's south foreshore. Upstream of Vauxhall Bridge, one, this bridge either crossed the Thames or went to a now lost island in the river. Dendrology dated the timbers to between 1750 BC and 1285 BC, too, in 2001. A further dig found that the timbers were driven vertically into the ground on the south bank of the Thames west of Vauxhall Bridge. 3. In 2010, the foundations of a large timber structure dated to between 4800 BC and 4500 BC, four were found, again on the foreshore south of Vauxhall Bridge, five, the function of the Mesolithic structure is not known. All these structures are on the south. Bank at a natural crossing point where the river Ephra flows into the Thames, six, archaeologist Leslie Wallace notes, because no LPRIA, late pre-Roman Iron Age, settlements or significant domestic refuse have been found in London, despite extensive archaeological excavation, arguments for a purely Roman foundation of London are now common and uncontroversial. 7. Early History Roman London, 47 to 410 AD. A Carausius coin from Londinium Minta Medal of Constantius I capturing London, inscribed as LON, in 296 after defeating Electus. From Borain's Treasure. Londinium was established as a civilian town by the Romans about four years, eight, after the invasion of 43 AD. London, like Rome, was founded on the point of the river where it was narrow enough to bridge and. The strategic location of the city provided easy access to much of Europe. Early Roman London occupied a relatively small area, roughly equivalent to the size of Hyde Park. In around 60 AD, it was destroyed by the Iceni led by their queen Boudicca. The city was quickly rebuilt as a planned Roman town and recovered after perhaps ten years. The city grew rapidly over the following decades. Although some sources claim that during the second century Londinium replaced Colchester as the capital of Roman Britain, Britannia, there is no surviving evidence to prove it was ever the capital of Roman Britain. Its population was around 60,000 inhabitants. It boasted major public buildings, including the largest basilica north of the Alps, temples, bathhouses, an amphitheater and a large fort for the city garrison. Political instability and recession from the 3rd century onwards led to a slow decline. At some time between 180 AD and 225 AD, the Romans built the defensive London Wall around the landward side of the city. The wall was about 3 kilometers, 1.9 miles, long, 6 meters, 20 feet, high, and 2.5 meters, 8.2 feet, thick. 
the wall would survive for another 1,600 years and define the city of London's perimeters for centuries to come. The perimeters of the present city are roughly defined by the line of the ancient wall. Londinium was an ethnically diverse city with inhabitants from across the Roman Empire, including natives of Britannia, continental Europe, the Middle East and North Africa, 9. In the late 3rd century, Londinium was raided on several occasions by Saxon pirates, 10. This led, from around 255 onwards, to the construction of an additional riverside wall. Six of the traditional seven city gates of London are of Roman origin, namely Ludgate, Newgate, Aldersgate. Cripplegate, Bishopsgate, and Aldgate, Moorgate is the exception, being of medieval origin. By the 5th century, the Roman Empire was in rapid decline and in 410 AD, the Roman occupation of Britannia came to an end. Following this, the Roman city also went into rapid decline and by the end of the 5th century was practically abandoned. Anglo-Saxon London, 5th century, 1066. Until recently it was believed that Anglo-Saxon settlement initially avoided the area immediately around Londinium. However, the discovery in 2008 of an Anglo-Saxon cemetery at Covent Garden indicates that the incomers had begun to settle there at least as early as the 6th century and possibly in the 5th. The main focus of this settlement was outside the Roman walls, clustering a short distance to the west along what is now the Strand between the Aldwick and Trafalgar Square. It was known as Londonwick, the WIC suffix here denoting a trading settlement. Recent excavations have also highlighted the population density and relatively sophisticated urban organization of this earlier Anglo-Saxon London, which was laid out on a grid pattern and grew to house a likely population of 10 to 12,000. Early Anglo-Saxon London belonged to a people known as the Middle Saxons, from whom the name of the county of Middlesex is derived, but who probably also occupied the approximate area of modern Hertfordshire and Surrey. However, by the early 7th century the London area had been incorporated into the Kingdom of the East Saxons. In 604 King Sabert of Essex converted to Christianity and London received Melitus, its first post-Roman bishop. At this time Essex was under the overlordship of King Ethelbert of Kent, and it was under Ethelbert's patronage that Melitus founded the first St. Paul's Cathedral, traditionally said to be on the site of an old Roman temple of Diana, although Christopher Wren found no evidence of this. It would have only been a modest church at first and may well have been destroyed, after he was expelled from the city by Sabert's pagan successors. The permanent establishment of Christianity in the East Saxon kingdom took place in the reign of King Sigebert II, in the 650s. During the 8th century, the Kingdom of Mercia extended its dominance over southeastern England, initially through overlordship which at times developed into outright annexation. London seems to have come under direct Mercian control in the 730s. A silver coin of Alfred, with the legend Lfred Rex the statue of Alfred the Great at Winchester, erected 1899. Viking attacks dominated most of the 9th century, becoming increasingly common from around 830 onwards. London was sacked in 842 and again in 851. The Danish Great Heathen Army 
which had rampaged across England since 865, wintered in London in 871. The city remained in Danish hands until 886, when it was captured by the forces of King Alfred the Great of Wessex and reincorporated into Mercia. Then governed under Alfred's sovereignty by his son-in-law Elderman Ethelred. A plaque in the city of London noting the re-establishment of the Roman walled city. Around this time the focus of settlement moved within the old Roman walls for the sake of defense, and the city became known as Londonbur. The Roman walls were repaired and the defensive ditch recut, while the bridge was probably rebuilt at this time. A second fortified borough was established on the south bank at Southwark, the Suthringa G work, defensive work of the men of Surrey. The old settlement of Londonwick became known as the Eildwick Or. Old Settlement, a name which survives today as Aldwych. From this point, the city of London began to develop its own unique local government. Following Ethelred's death in 911, it was transferred to Wessex, preceding the absorption of the rest of Mercia in 918. Although it faced competition for political preeminence in the United Kingdom of England, from the traditional West Saxon centre of Winchester, London's size and commercial wealth brought it a steadily increasing importance as a focus of governmental activity. King Athelstan held many meetings of the Witton in London, issued laws from there, while King Ethelred the Unready issued the laws of London there in 978. Following the resumption of Viking attacks in the reign of Ethelred, London was unsuccessfully attacked in 994 by an army unday. Our King Swain Forkbeard of Denmark As English resistance to the sustained and escalating Danish onslaught finally collapsed in 1013, London repulsed an attack by the Danes and was the last place to hold out while the rest of the country submitted to Swain, but by the end of the year it too capitulated and Ethelred fled abroad. Swain died just five weeks after having been proclaimed king. And Ethelred was restored to the throne, but Swain's son Nut returned to the attack in 1015. After Ethelred's death at London in 1016 his son Edmund Ironside was proclaimed king thereby the Witonjmot and left to gather forces in Wessex. London was then subjected to a systematic siege by Nut, but was relieved by King Edmund's army, when Edmund again left to recruit reinforcements in Wessex. The Danes resumed the siege, but were again unsuccessful. However, Following his defeat at the Battle of Asandon, Edmund ceded to not all of England north of the Thames, including London, and his death a few weeks later left Nut in control of the whole country. A Norse saga tells of a battle when King Ethelred returned to attack Danish occupied London. According to the saga, the Danes lined London Bridge and showered the attackers with spears. Undaunted, the attackers pulled the roofs off nearby houses and held them over their heads in the boats. Thus protected, they were able to get close enough to the bridge to attach ropes to the piers and pull the bridge down, thus ending the Viking occupation of London. This story presumably relates to Ethelred's return to power after Swain's death in 1014, but there is no strong evidence of any such struggle for control of London on that occasion. Following the extinction of Nut's dynasty in 1042 English rule was restored under Edward the Confessor. 
he was responsible for the foundation of Westminster Abbey and spent much of his time at Westminster, which from this time steadily supplanted the city itself as the center of government. Edward's death at Westminster in 1066 without a clear heir led to a succession dispute and the Norman conquest of England. Earl Harold Godwinson was elected king by the Wittonjmot and crowned in Westminster Abbey but was defeated and killed by William the Bastard, Duke of Normandy at the Battle of Hastings. The surviving members of the Witton met in London and elected King Edward's young nephew Edgar the Etheling as king. The Normans advanced to the south bank of the Thames opposite London, where they defeated an English attack and burned Southwark but were unable to storm the bridge. They moved upstream and crossed the river at Wallingford before advancing on London from the northwest. The resolve of the English leadership to resist collapsed and the chief citizens of London went out together, with the leading members of the church and aristocracy to submit to William. At Buckhampstead, although according to some accounts there was a subsequent violent clash when the Normans reached the city. Having occupied London, William was crowned king in Westminster Abbey. Norman and Medieval London, 1066, late 15th century. A depiction of the imprisonment of Charles, Duke of Orleans in the Tower of London, from a 15th century manuscript. Old London Bridge is in the background. The new Norman regime established new fortresses within the city to dominate the native population. By far the most important of these was the Tower of London at the eastern end of the city, where the initial timber fortification was rapidly replaced by the construction of the first stone castle in England. The smaller forts of Baynard's Castle and Montfichet's Castle were also established along the waterfront. King William also granted a charter in 1067 confirming the city's existing rights, privileges, and laws. London was a centre of England's nascent Jewish population, the first of whom arrived in about 1070, 11. Its growing self-government was consolidated by the election rights granted by King John in 1199 and 1215. On 17 October 1091 a tornado rated T8 on the Toro scale, equivalent to an F4 on the Fujita scale, hit London. It directly struck the Church of St. Marylebone. The raft is 7.9 meters long, 26 feet were said to have been buried so deep into the ground that only 1.2 meters, 4 feet, was visible. Other churches in the area were destroyed as well. It was reported to have also destroyed over 600 houses, although most of them were primarily wood, and hit the London Bridge. After the tornado the bridge was rebuilt in stone. The tornado caused two deaths and an unknown number of injuries, this tornado is mentioned in Chronicles by Florence of Worcester and William of Malmesbury. The latter of the two describing it as a great spectacle for those watching from afar, but a terrifying experience for those standing near. In 1097, William Rufus, the son of William the Conqueror, began the construction of Westminster Hall, which became the focus of the Palace of Westminster. In 1176, construction began of the most famous incarnation of London Bridge, completed in 1209, which was built on the site of several earlier timber bridges. This bridge would last for 600 years, 
and remained the only bridge across the River Thames until 1739. Violence against Jews took place in 1190, after it was rumoured that the new king had ordered their massacre after they had presented themselves at his coronation. 12. In 1216, during the First Baron's War London was occupied by Prince Louis of France, who had been called in by the baronial rebels against King John and was acclaimed as King of England in St. Paul's Cathedral. However, following John's death in 1217 Louis supporters reverted to their Plantagenet allegiance, rallying round John's son Henry III, and Louis was forced to withdraw from England. In 1224, after an accusation of ritual murder, the Jewish community was subjected to a steep punitive Levi. Then in 1232, Henry III confiscated the principal synagogue of the London Jewish community. Because he claimed their chanting was audible in a neighbouring church, 13, in 1264, during the Second Barons War. Simon de Montfort's rebels occupied London and killed 500 Jews while attempting to seize records of debts. 14. London's Jewish community was forced to leave England by the expulsion by Edward I in 1290. They left for France, Holland and further afield. Their property was seized and many suffered robbery and murder as they departed. 12. Over the following centuries, London would shake off the heavy French cultural and linguistic influence which had been there since the times of the Norman Conquest. The city would figure heavily in the development of early modern English. London C. 1300 during the Peasants' Revolt of 1381, London was invaded by rebels led by Wat Tyler. A group of peasants stormed the Tower of London and executed the Lord Chancellor, Archbishop Simon Sudbury, and the Lord Treasurer. The peasants looted the city and set fire to numerous buildings. Tyler was stabbed to death by the Lord Mayor William Walworth in a confrontation at Smithfield and the revolt collapsed. Trade increased steadily during the Middle Ages, and London grew heavily as a result. In 1100, London's population was somewhat more than 15,000. By 1300, it had grown to roughly 80,000. London lost at least half of its population during the Black Death in the mid-14th century, but its economic and political importance stimulated a quick recovery despite further epidemics. Trade in London was organised into various guilds, which effectively controlled the city and elected the Lord Mayor of the City of London. Medieval London was made up of narrow and twisting streets, and most of the buildings were made from combustible materials such as timber and straw, which made fire a constant threat, while sanitation in cities was of low quality.